Hey, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing a, uh, a video on changing the timing belt on a 2004 Toyota Sienna with a VVT-i V6 3.3 liter engine. Uh, it takes a few hours to do this job. It's a little bit in, a little bit involved, and uh, but all in all, uh, can be easily done in your driveway. So here's the engine. <clears throat> First thing we're going to start by doing is uh, disconnecting the battery, uh, the battery negative. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the uh, antifreeze out of the uh, radiator. Uh, then we're going to remove the top uh, motor mount. I purchased a timing belt kit from Rock Auto. And in this kit gives you some nice instructions, your timing marks. That's pretty sweet. Um, take your a timing belt. Comes with some idler. Comes with a water pump. Water pump gasket. Um, looks like we got a tensioner, a tensioner bearing. Excuse me, an idler bearing, a new tensioner spring. So this is the basic stuff that we'll need to do this job. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to block the back wheel of the vehicle because I'm going to be jacking up the front end right here and I'm gonna be taking the front right wheel. We'll start with this bracket right here. Each of these takes a 12 millimeter socket. And just take, and take this bracket and put it off to the side. I like to keep the hardware with the brackets, that way I know which, which, hard, which, which screws go with what piece. Next, we're gonna take these uh, screws out and each one uses a 14 millimeter socket. Okay, so I must say that these two bolts were seized in there pretty good so I had to get the old half inch drive okay they're all loose and I'll just take the hardware out um, and bracket assembly out and, and then I'll just take this and I'll slide it off to the side so you gotta love the older engines or the older cars because uh, this bolt evidently I got too strong on it and I busted it so alrighty then we'll figure it out here in a second Taking a look around, looking at my top motor mount. I can see it cracking a bit, so I'll schedule this uh, sometime in the future to replace the top motor mount. <laughs> remove this alternator bracket uh, right here. Also 14 millimeter socket to remove this. All right, keep the hardware with the bracket and put the bracket off to the side. Remove the grounding strap. Remove your radiator cap. Well, not your radiator cap, but your coolant cap and put it off to the side. Your, your wire harness is connected here, here, and back here. So just release the latches. The latches are still there. And uh, kind of pull it up so you can move the harness up out of the way. This sensor was right here. I just undid the bolt 10 millimeter socket from it. I could have just disconnected the sensor, but I didn't. So I'll just remember to put it back on and then tuck it off to the side right there. Okay, so every little pain point I discover, I'm going to share with you because I don't want you to be surprised. So I got some penetrant lubricant. I'm going to spray it down in this hole because that's where the bolt broke off, down in this hole. And I'm gonna spray it down in here. Why am I doing this? Because this bracket is seized to the other bracket and I've been giving it some love taps with my mini sledge without destroying it. And uh, it's moving a little bit, but I wanted to kind of give it some help here. Now's a good time to drain the radiator fluid cool it uh, while we let that penetrant lubricant seek in and we'll place this container underneath the front right part of the radiator the reason is because there's a drain plug right there at the bottom of the radiator all right so got it out plug was in there pretty good so i must say i could have easily had the timing belt off and on by now for the time that I'm spending on this bracket. I can see I'm starting to get a gap down here so I know it's lifting up and I'll just keep doing the same process until I get it out. All right enough was enough with this bracket I just went ahead and put my little pry bar in here and I was just moving it back and forth moving back and forth until I broke that bolt at the base. I just need to get this thing out of here and yeah, that bolt is in there good so obviously I'm gonna have to replace this. All right, our next step is we're gonna take this alternator bracket off. Uh, so we have 14 millimeter socket right here. Um, and then we have a uh, 12 millimeter socket to use Correct. direction. It's slotted on the alternator side. So take the uh, 12, use the 12 millimeter socket and take the bottom nut off. Uh, loosen this and we'll take the bracket out. And we'll take this bracket. Now we're gonna use the same 12 millimeter socket 
and we're gonna loosen we're gonna loosen this just loosen the side one here and then we're gonna crank we're gonna loosen this one up and loosening it to the left is actually gonna pull the alternator in so that we can pull this belt off as you can see I'm continuing to turn it to the left and you can see how that belt is loosening right up all right belts off now I'm going to take my 10 millimeter socket again and there are I'm gonna take this cover off uh, the top timing belt cover and there's about six of these screws um, all the way around the top so take those off and we'll take the top cover off. all right so if you're fighting with this cover trying to figure out where is that last screw at it's uh, underneath there's one just underneath this bracket right here pretty easy to get to and then there's one I don't know probably about 10 o'clock position back here which was fairly easy to get to but it was this hidden one down here that I couldn't find <laughs> anyways once you get them off you can take the cover off so hear this noise that's the noise I was hearing when it was running imagine that noise uh, at however 2000 rpm sounds like a rubbing noise but uh, I'm thinking it's the belt so first timing belt was done at 90,000 miles we're at 177,000 miles now and so about time to do the next timing belt so that's why we're doing it okay now I'm going to take these this bracket off I've got a uh, using my 12 millimeter socket I got a, a bolt here um, I'll take this nut off here I'll take that bolt down there below it off and then there's another nut there's a nut on the bottom below just just below that all right so now we uh, we have the bracket loose let me get down there to the bottom so we're gonna take the front right wheel off uh, access the bottom cover um, hopefully I won't have to lift lift the engine up I did have to do it last time but I've seen some YouTube videos where people finagle that bracket out of there so I'm gonna see if I can't finagle it but uh, all right all right front right wheel off I've got it blocked with the jack stand I've also got the jack underneath there. I had to use my puny jack because my um, my shop jack broke. Um, we're gonna take this panel off, right? 10 millimeter socket. All right, with the cover off, we expose our, our uh, harmonic balancer. And so we need to take this off. 22 millimeter socket, get your air impact wrench. All right, before I can pull the balancer, I have to take this uh, power steering belt off. So I'm gonna have to loosen this bolt, uh, loosen, loosen the, that way I can pivot, pivot the power steering pump up so I can take the belt off. 12 millimeter socket. All right, bracket off, pulled this up, pull the belt off, and get the belt out. All right, so everybody else was online was able to easily pull this off with their hands, but in my case, and probably in your case, you're gonna to need to get a puller. And what I'm gonna use is a, a T-bar puller to pull it off straight. The key is to pull it off straight. Wiggle it, jiggle it a little bit by hand, see if it starts wiggling out, but don't break your back trying to do it and don't make so uh, we're just going to use a puller first start and find the screws that actually fit the threaded holes right here and then we'll connect the t-bar puller so the t-bar puller fits in there just like that make sure that those uh, those screws are threaded in there a ways into the harmonic balancer you want to pull this thing straight out now that everything is in place now you just screw this clockwise and it'll slowly pull out that way you're not damaging anything See, it's coming out there nice and slow. Stick my hand in here to catch it. And don't let this hit the ground. You don't want it to fall and hit the ground. It's balanced. All right. All right, now we're gonna take uh, this bottom timing cover off. Screw with 10 millimeter socket. Screw with 10 millimeter socket. Socket, but there's one right there. And that might be it. All right, with those screws out, take this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this harmonic balancer bolt back in because I need to spin the sprocket so that the timing marks are lined up. So what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna spin it clockwise so that, see on that back plate, back behind the belt, you see a little dimple up there. That dimple needs to line up with the notch on the engine. All right, you can see that dimple is lined up with that little dimple on the engine block. All right, now I'm gonna go up on top to make sure the timing marks are off, are correct up there. If they are not, you need to rotate this one more turn around and then check your timing marks up on top. Remember to turn it clockwise. Okay, looks like we're top dead center. So with that dimple down below lined up, we're looking on this cam right here, on this tooth, whenever you see a little notch, that needs to line up with the T. The T, you see it right there? The T lines up with that notch. That's lined up, and the bottom one, the dimple's lined up with the engine block. And uh, now we know we're number one cylinder top dead center, and this is the time to change the belt. So looking at the uh, diagram that they gave us, so looking at the diagram, what we saw in the engine here, and we were turning the bottom, the bottom one clockwise because there was a, there's a dimple on the engine block, and then there's a dimple on that washer behind the sprocket. We're lining those up, and after you line that up, and you come up here to your top front one, and you want to make sure that the little T mark uh, lines up with the dimple on the cover. So there's there's the dimple on the cover, and then there's the uh, the T mark on the tooth. Um, and then when you when we put our new belt on That's what this line is the belts are gonna have a line on them And then there's gonna be a dotted line for down here That'll be marked up with a dimple that's on the sprocket So as we start putting the belt on I'll start uh, pointing out these dimples. I apologize I don't have a paint marker uh, to kind of um, To show it to you guys and gals uh, clearly um, but the 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 diagram that they give you and the diagrams that they have online are, are very clear so here's another illustration so i was trying to show you that back washer behind the sprocket right over here you can see the dimple and then you can see the little dimple on the engine block how they're lined up Fuck, man taking this bracket sliding it out i was i'm able to take it out without having to uh, block the engine up at all so that's a that's a new one for me Maybe it's pulling the water pump out is when I have to do it. Now it's time to remove the timing belt tensioner, which is this guy right here. So we take this bolt out and then we squeeze this down right here to access uh, this bolt back here. And what that's gonna do is gonna relieve tension from this tensioner bearing. Now that the spring tensioner is off, we can actually pull this tensioner pulley down loosens up the belt and we can actually go ahead at this time and pull the belt off. The old belt I had was a Bando brand. The new one I'm putting on is Mitsubishi. So now is a good time to replace the tensioner bearing. The tool you use is a hex key, and I have a hex key that I use with my 3 8 inch ratchet. Size is 10 millimeter. So I was on there pretty tight, so I had to get my half inch drive uh, with the longer arm to give them some better leverage, but that loosened it up. Otherwise, you're in store for a real knuckle buster. So when you pull it up out of there, make sure you have that washer. There's a washer behind it. So the other bearing that was included in the timing belt kit was this uh, idler bearing. And this, this powder you're seeing here, that was from the uh, from the clip from my wire harness here. So it's kind of blue, dusty material. Anyways, um, we'll replace this. It's held in there with a bolt that takes a 14 millimeter socket. Get a little bit of leverage on it. And there we go. The longer handle really helps. 
finally we're getting down to the nitty gritty um new water pump which comes with the kit okay so this part right here if you watch other youtube videos notice that people are using a t excuse me a t torx 7 or a torx 8 whatnot on these studs right here because these studs have to come out in order to get your water pump out there's a stud right here and a stud right here however the first time i changed the timing belt on this those torx ends broke off which probably is the reason why my bracket came out so easy but anyways because of this i had no place to grab these bolts so or these studs <clears throat> so what i did is i bought a uh oops i bought a metric stud remover set very inexpensive um and it's the eight millimeter uh, stud remover set and what it does is it grabs around the shoulder of the stud and it uh, and you're able to remove it because it grabs the shoulder as you turn counterclockwise so while using a wrench in this case I'm using a crescent wrench just turn the stud counterclockwise using the stud removal set and and they work really well as you can see it just grabs right onto the shoulder just whatever you do, whatever you do when you're removing this, don't booger up these threads. Just don't booger up the threads if you want to reuse it. So on the new water pump, I'm just going to go ahead and mark. I'm just going to make a mark on where the studs were. So one of your remaining water pump screws is blocked if you install the new idler bearing so hold off on installing the new idler bearing and put it off to the side until you get the new water pump in there are six remaining screws one two three four five six on the water pump we need to remove those using a 10 millimeter socket so a couple of them are actually nuts so just be careful they're small don't drop them don't lose them uh, if you if you drop one make sure you find it because you don't want it hanging around inside that uh, timing belt area when you put the covers back on so yes I dropped mine and I had to search for it <laughs> now's a good time to put a, a catch pan underneath there because when we pull this water pump off uh, the residual uh, coolant that's in the engine block down there is going to spill out onto the hardware off just grab the water pump and, and jiggle it until it comes out so here's a bit of helpful information uh, there's a first off don't put the idler bearing back in place yet until after you've replaced your water pump the reason is uh, this cover overlaps the water pump and prevents you from pulling it out so I took this screw out from the cover I took this screw out from the cover using 10 millimeter socket I didn't I removed the idler pulley excuse me eh, I removed the idler bearing which I had installed new so I have not put the idler bearing back on it gives us a little bit of flexibility so that I can maneuver this water pump out of here because you need that little bit of movement to get that thing back up underneath there. So now you want to make sure that the surface where the new water pump is going to meet up um, and the gasket is, is nice and clean. So use real fine sandpaper, a real fine power tool or something, just brake cleaner, something. Just clean, clean the uh, surface up real good. All right, after you've cleaned the surface, uh, get your new gasket and put your new gasket into place quite honestly all the other youtube channels make it look so so simple but you want to be sure that none of this gasket overlaps this cover so you want to make sure that because you get this little dowel alignment notch here just be patient wiggle it in there you'll figure it out um just make sure it, it, it's underneath the cover not over the cover you don't want to force it all right, the same thing goes with the new water pump. When you're putting it back in, be patient. Remember how you wiggled it out. All 
Okay. So I was kind of in a stalemate position to where I was kind of angled and I knew I was lined up. I just, it was just at such an angle that I couldn't get it to go in there. So what I did is I just put a little bit of force down on here to straighten, I straighten the housing out. And once the housing got straightened out, boom, slid right into place. So now's a good time to double check. Everything is in its position where it was before. Gasket didn't slip out of place. You can feel it with your fingers on the bottom. Check it out from underneath too. You know, make sure nothing looks abnormal <clears throat> before you put the hardware on. And then uh, get a good look around in here for any hardware that you may have dropped. Install the nuts. Install the bolts. Install your idler bearing. And then install your tensioner bearing. Idler bearing, idler pulley, whatever you want to call it. It's a bearing. It's in place. The screws for the cover are back in place and tightened down. The uh, hardware, the, the bolts and the screws holding the uh, water pump in place are secure. And I tightened them down in a crisscross pattern as best as you can. And the tensioner bearing or tensioner pulley whatever you want to call it it is installed now it's time to put the new belt on so we want to install it this way uh, as you can see the arrows pointing towards the front you don't want it this way you want it arrows pointing towards the front and you want this dotted line to be at the bottom which means this line right here is going to be lined up with the T right there just like that so you got the T, got the line, got the dimple. So I'm actually going to start with the back one because this one's hard, hard, hard to see. So I got a light back here. And I get your phone. Oh, see, we're one tooth, two forward. And so there we go. So now we're lined up. I'm going to get something to clip this down into place to hold it into place. That way I know the back one is always lined up. Some sort of a clip. Hair clip, clothesline clip, something. Something to pinch down on top just to hold it in place. So yeah, it fits in there nicely. And as you can see, that mark is lined up with the pulley. And you see the yellow line? And that clip's gonna hold it to prevent it from slipping off. So now I'm gonna do the bottom side. So you want it to, to fold over the top of this tensioner pulley. Come back around. Accomplish is we want that dotted line We want that dotted line to be lined up with that dimple right there. See that dimple? We want that dotted line to be right on that dimple. Just like that. I wedged something in there. I wedged a little socket in there just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, so take this process slow. Be patient. All right, so we got the belt in place. You see the dimple there? On the back still lined up with the dimple on the uh, engine block we look off to the side here and you can see the dimple right there lined up with the dotted line that's good come back up on top <clears throat> we see it coming around here the water pump over here we got some nice tension nice tension coming up around here and now we have the white the yellow line lined up with the T for timing and then lined up with the dimple right there follow it back down still got some nice tension underneath the idler bearing or pulley and back here we check our first spot which aligned and we can still see we're lined up that's good. The only place you want slop or any type of looseness in your belt is down here where the tensioner pulley goes. And so now's the time. We've got all our marks lined up. We're going to put our tensioner spring on. All right, we got the old spring and the new spring. And the new spring comes with a pin in it. Do not pull that pin until you're ready and have it already installed. We're gonna reuse our 
old hardware and install the new spring. All right, temperature spring is in place. Uh, both bolts are tightened down. This time, double check your alignment marks on bottom and on top. And everything is good. You can go ahead and pull the pin, which will put spring tension onto the belt. There we go. I want to circle back around to these this lower bracket and the upper. The bolt broke off in it. And the other one was taking the threads out of the bottom part of the bracket. So we've got a bolt thread stuck in this. And in the top bracket, uh, at least half of the bolt, if not more, two thirds of the bolt is actually seized in there. This range is from between $50 to $70 online. What's cool about it is the, the $63 ones to $70 ones include, they include the bolts. So that's pretty sweet. This one was a little bit harder to find online, uh, but it appears there's a couple of online Toyota dealers that sell it. It's a bit more expensive. It's about $130. Bucks. I don't want to spend three hours drilling these bolts out because I don't have a machine shop and I just have my hand tools. So because I'm strapped for time, I went ahead and bought uh, the lower and the upper new brackets and I bought two new bolts for them from the Toyota dealership because time is against me here and I need to get this car up and running. Folks, when you put this in, use anti-seize compound on these bolts. Otherwise, this job will set you back at least $300 uh, because right there, you're looking at $300. All right, go ahead and put this bottom bracket back on. Note, uh, you might want to put this bracket on before you put the bottom cover on as it was funny to wiggle it around that bottom cover, but it was doable. It's time to put this cover back on. And when you put this cover back on, this top cover tucks behind the bottom cover. So when you put it in, tuck it in there like that to get behind the bottom cover. After the top cover is in place, now it's time to install your new alternator belt. Since the new belts are much tighter because they're not stretched out, you will you may need to adjust your alternator a little bit farther in by screwing in that one screw down there with the 12 millimeter socket. All right, after you've got your belt installed, now go ahead and tighten this bolt clockwise until you get the right tension on that belt. So I almost forgot about this bracket. This is the bracket that fits right there that nut off all right so put that bracket into place and then put that nut back on there and then tighten this one up with a 14 millimeter all the way so now before we put the top uh, motor mount bracket on we want to prep the surfaces with anti-seize i'm going to prep that surface with anti-seize i'm going to prep the bolts with anti-seize and uh, here's what anti-seize looks like it looks like crazy woman's eyeshadow, but it's necessary. And go ahead and reinstall the top motor mount bracket and reposition the motor mount. That sensor back into place and it mounts right down there. Okay, now we can put on this bracket. Which goes right here. Now with everything into place, it's time to add the antifreeze to the system. And finally, after you've filled up the fluid into the radiator, put your battery back into place. Or if you just disconnected your battery negative terminal, put your battery negative terminal back on. And let it run for a little while. <clears throat> run the coolant through the system. Make sure the car doesn't overheat. And uh, check the coolant after it cools down. So thank you for watching my video. If you liked the video, Please press like. If you like watching my videos, please subscribe. Here's the financial results of replacing my timing belt and the belts, brackets, and everything. As you can see, the bracket set me back $330. Uh, I looked online on an estimator. A Toyota dealership will charge you anywhere from $649 to $995 to do this job. That's just the belt. They will probably charge you for the water pump and 
any other accessories that they need to replace, plus the alternator belt and power steering belt. So at least, uh, conservatively, I would say this, this job, everything that we did here would cost you right around $995 at a Toyota dealership. With that said, um, we're saving ourselves. If we didn't have to uh, replace the bracket, we're probably, you're probably looking at a savings anywhere from between $400 to $800 if you do it yourself. And this is all conservatively speaking. This job took me approximately, I would say, five hours. And some thunderstorms come through. That's why you see some of the video. You can see it's dark at night because I was coming home from work late at night trying to do what I can before the thunderstorms came. So, uh, but anyways, I hope this video helps you.